By 2012, Gemma had become a permanent fixture on TOWIE. As her storylines evolved, she opened up and revealed a personal struggle. Basically, he's saying he thinks I'm pretty, but I'm too fat to go out with him. As a teenager, Gemma was a slim size 10, and diets were the least of her worries. She could eat whatever she wanted, and she never really put on weight because she always was dancing. But in her 20s, that all changed. Gemma got together with a city trader from Essex. Three years into the relationship, Gemma got pregnant, but there were complications. She had an issue which had a fair chance of affecting the baby. She decided to have it terminated. It does actually turn your life upside down. You don't get over it. The termination hit Gemma hard. It was like years later when we all sort of found out Gemma had suicidal thoughts and all that self-harm that she'd gone through, it was all really shocked by it. It was like, where did this all come from? Gemma hit rock bottom, the tragedy and the upset and the self-harming. Gemma started a complicated relationship with food. Behind closed doors, obviously, she might be eating before going out for dinner. She starts going on a downward spiral. That's when she does the yo-yo dieting again. And it was her way. And it took me quite a few years to realise that, because when something's quite personal, it takes a long time to get it out of her. On The Only Way as Essex, Gemma's shape meant that she was different to the other girls. We realised that she did have some hang-ups about her weight. I've hit a massive brick wall with, like, my dieting and it's making me really unhappy. The girls on the show at the time were incredibly slim and Gemma was just a normal, curvy girl. And it is quite difficult when you are put next to somebody who is a sort of size zero and not maybe compare yourself to others. She was the bigger girl. She had the angle and she was going out there to embrace it. Sod my bloody diet. Some of Gemma's boyfriends have been um, pulled to her. Now you look a little bit, I reckon, the cross between Dinah Dawes and Vanessa Feltz. <laughs> that is so lame. <laughs> Give her a kiss and tell you. No, Vanessa Feltz is out of order. Why are you making oh, yeah, 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 it? It's just not even funny. Everything from diets to dresses was scrutinised. And Gemma was offered money to star in Lose Weight campaigns. It's quite dangerous grounds to be doing that, and it's not actually very good for your mental health. As her profile grew, she became a target for bullies online. You've got all these comments on social media, you know, fat shaming her, call her like pig and all that, like just unnecessary, disgusting words, really. You can criticise someone, but you don't have to get personal. People would be like, Oh, yeah, like, you're so fat. She says, oh, yeah, if there's any horrible comments, Hayden, she gives me her phone, just if there's anything nasty, just delete it. I don't want to see it. That negative energy that Gemma gets does get to her inside. Gemma could lose all the weight and be five stone, and then people will just tell her she's too skinny. I remember when she was getting death threats on social media, people saying, you're so fat, dire, and that really brought her confidence down. I mean, getting death threats is, is, not, is not a joke. It's not only abuse, it's actually, like, that's terrifying. It's hard to watch. <laughs> I forget, well, you don't forget it, but that's the downside to fame. Mm. I'm a lot more comfortable now in my own skin. But the viciousness of that, you know, we found some of these messages, please leave Tower and die. You hurt my eyes when you come on TV. Please just die, you waste of oxygen. You're just a fat attention-seeking bee, <laughs> and so on. I mean, utterly vile. Yeah, it and is. And I would normally say, well, they'd never say it to your face, but some people did say this to your face. They would shout it in the street at you. Yeah. It was so embarrassing once. I was taking my mum for lunch, a van pulled up, and they started abusing me. It wasn't for me. I felt so hurt that that happened in front of my mum. What were they saying? You fat <laughs> You know, fat cow. Really? Look at the stuff mother? in your face. It, again, I'm used to it. I didn't want my mum to hear it. Was she upset by it? Very upset, yeah. You've talked very openly about an ongoing struggle with your weight. It's obviously... It's a part of your life. Yeah, I have always turned to food um, in, in times of crisis. I mean, any occasion, if I'm happy, I eat. If I'm sad, I eat. Um, but I think it's, it's about dealing with your emotions and trying to find a way of dealing with them in a healthy way and not turning to something that can harm you, because it is like a form of self-harm. 
You went from a size 10 to a size 20 in the space of one year. What was causing all that? I was really happy. I had a lovely boyfriend and uh, he was a stockbroker and we lived in a lovely home and I can remember saying, oh, I'm pregnant. We'd been together five years. I remember going for my three-month scan and they said, uh, you know, your baby's not right. It's, it's going to be deformed, basically. Um, and I had to make a decision. I went and had a termination, which was hard to go and do. You, you terminated your baby. You then, this guy that you love... Who, yep. You went with, with someone for five else. Years. He runs off with somebody. Yep. And then you turn to eating a lot more than you were before and you also start to self-harm. Why were you self-harming, do you think? Um, well, I was probably desperately unhappy. How old were you at this time? Probably about 20, 21. You know, and, yeah... <laughs> Shocking, really, isn't it? I've still got scars on my wrists that I can see now. Um, what would you that do? Especially. What? I look at that now and I just see it as a sign of how far that I've come. What would you do to yourself? I just would get a knife and start... Not... I don't know, it was like a release. It was, it was a coping mechanism, I think, but I'm well out of it now. And I've never, never, ever tried to ever revisit that. Um... Were you actually suicidal at the time? Did you feel like you could actually have gone through with it, or was it more a cry for help? Probably more a cry for help. I should have probably had therapy at the time. You know, and I wouldn't judge anyone. There's a lot of people that might be watching this and judge. It can happen to anyone.